You can hear us. You can hear us okay, Jennifer? So I can hear you if I, I hear you through, through, through my phone. Here we go. This is a regular monthly board meeting, the Orange and Great Board Authority. It's Thursday, July 15th, 2021. It is 4.08 p.m. All the meetings to order. So, Orange, any letters of communication to the board? Um, no letters, but there's a number of communications um, that you probably are seeing. Um, the one that really uh, did really well for us was the NCPR uh, story that they did basically saying uh, a child care center for Ironsburg is from an unlikely source. Um, I've been hearing from a number of people uh, all through the region and even in Albany. Um, I thought very highly of the uh, they did a very good job of, uh, of uh, explaining what they're doing. Uh, you see a few things related to the bridge. Uh, we talked about the closure. Another uh, article was on the child care survey. And that got our message out. Um, the last two things, uh, one was the telescopes here in our park. And uh, they, they worked with our bridge crew. They do, they did your uh, paint that your instruments did. So basically, um, the bridge was like a lap, in the lap for them. And, and they, they go all over the world with their testing uh, equipment. So um, they asked and uh, we just trying to develop a kind of a relationship that um, they need to go out on the bridge. So anyway, um, our bridge crew and the proposals in our bridge crew went out and uh, did some uh, testing with them and uh, it allowed them to uh, see, I, I guess they wanted to test some of their equipment and uh, they just supported the promotional thing. So um, that, that was kind of a good uh, partnership there. And then uh, in the North Country annual report, I had in here, um, I believe it was uh, page nine here, um, there was the middle photo was, uh, they mentioned this uh, part of the things going on in the region, the uh, upgraded rehab of the bridge, is a really good picture in there of the network here. So uh, I just put that as well, the work goes on. That's all I have. Anyone have any questions, uh, comments, regarding the city? If not, we'll move to the approval of March 3rd, 2021. 2nd, 2021. Ms. Kim? It's not here. No, uh, but the Assistant Secretary, Ms. Terminelli, she reviewed them. Did she approve them with no changes? Correct. Like a motion. Yes. Okay. So I would, uh, based on the uh, review of the assistant secretary, will be at June third, Andrew twenty second. Board. Okay. Motion to date. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All those that approve. Three more. Presentations and reports. Uh, first is the uh, Child Care Initiative Committee report. Um, Lawrence, if you would uh, start off with that, I can see that that's true. Um, here at the meeting, uh, we had, if you would uh, go the rest of the board and um, what do you mean? Uh, well, um, we basically we, we met with. We met with the uh, executive director of uh, ARC of Jefferson State County and Long County and uh, asked, um, asked if they were interested in uh, partnering with us as an operator um, of the child care facility. And uh, the committee members asked a number of questions. Um, I believe a lot of the responses were uh, uh, sufficient and um, some were uh, we needed more detail. Um, they were very forthcoming with the uh, number of things that they could provide. It really did seem to uh, match up pretty well with uh, 
know, what our goals are. So um, we kind of left that when we talk more about that. We also, um, we are going out for grant applications and we kind of wanted them on board to uh, um, kind of partner with us to, to going forward that we get um, all the needs of the project covered up with that. So uh, uh, it was very productive. Uh, you know, I don't know any details. We did, and then later on we did talk about the uh, survey. Right. Uh, you have the uh, survey uh, in front of you uh, as of today uh, with the responses. Uh, there's a lot of good information in there. Um, I'm happy to say that this survey uh, was developed and implemented by um, Tony in the call. They worked on it. Very little uh, input me sent through the experts and uh, I think it's a, a job well done. Uh, a lot of excellent uh, information uh, for us to go on and uh, what we haven't really stated before to be stated now that it is the committee's intention and hopefully the board that uh, we would uh, construct the building uh, with the uh, understanding needs of whoever may be the operator it is not our desire to be the operator, just lease the building to someone who would operate the child care center. That is one thing we have pretty much decided. Any further questions uh, on that? I can do my best to. Try to answer, but I think it's in review that uh, survey results are pretty comprehensive. Again, a job well done by the uh, two uh, excellent members of the committee. Sent out to all of those places. I don't know if they have given it to their employees. Uh, we'll need to check because there's significant numbers in those groups. So obviously, there's still a little bit more work to do. Uh, and Steve told you there's some time constraint. Uh, we're working on uh, what they need funding. <clears throat> Everyone we talk to who might provide funding to us. We made it clear that we do not have the financial resources to put money into this, but we have the knowledge on how to build the building. So that's where we have it. We have the location. Probably. Yes. The location would be uh, looking at the map, I think, Steve, uh, if you could tell them. Yeah. Uh, right in that area right there. And that uh, each side of that is the utility corridor, so it would be the cost of connecting uh, uh, utility there. There's a utility corridor to the west of there that kind of runs right through to the end. So um, that was always a prime spot for another uh, location for some utilities there. So um, I think over the last 10 years, we've had two uh, possible projects that were we had the blank work already done. So we've been operating that and we're going a little bit farther with renters. Our main goal was to 
to uh, review and modify the job description for the director of economic development position. Uh, we signed to um, several of the exception functions and the qualification um, for the position. We also talked about various methods of recruiting and advertising um, for the position. We talked about print media, um, different support websites working there, different social media sources like LinkedIn, um, and perhaps some like web-based sites uh, like community. We also talked about um, the importance of really advertising and recruiting specifically. Um, this representative will be and they for this position um, really will need to possess knowledge of their state regulations as long as it's a long list, um, you know, knowledge of the Canadian trade. Um, so we talked about the press for Burlington area, um, the state of the first TI corridor, um, Rochester, Mexico, Buffalo, Niagara region, um, those were all discussed in our meeting. Um, so, sort of as an addendum to our committee meeting, um, we forwarded an article um, to members of the committee. I'm not sure all board members uh, on the foreign direct investment. I don't, I don't remember if it's like all the board or just to our committee. But it's yeah. Okay. Right. So that article was really helpful and really echoes um, the, well, it reinforces the 11 cities that we were talking about that, the area in New York City we were talking about, some of the top cities for foreign direct investment were listed, like um, in the Sagwa, which is the U.S. of Rochester, which is the other area, very complex, low name, small. That. They were listed like number two. Number four was Montreal. Target. Um, France and Ontario was number 12. That was listed in Sagwa. Um, the Niagara Falls, Buffalo area. And then Hyper was number 14. So it's great to name the list. Um, so we also talked about a timeline. Um, September 1 was mentioned. We haven't, we need to do a little bit more work about making decisions about how we're going to host the position and specifically the way of the house. Um, so we'll do that for sure. We have a resolution through the job description where we made a lot of recommendations and trying to come that up. So I've been taking motions that we need to adopt.
And then when we get down to our current liability or health table, we've been separating those out into regular New York State retirement and the player grant. The player grant is so at this point we are zero there. The New York State retirement has since the financial has been um, created. The New York State retirement has gone from 216,000 to 79,000, which is made another payment today. Uh, we've been able to make a uh, serious inroads there thanks to the solution. Our regular account <laughs> after taking out retirement and those items, as Chevron has done today, our current account payable three hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. Won't last forever, but we'll take it. On that three hundred and fifty nine, two hundred and seventy two thousand belongs to four vendors. <clears throat> A couple have. Um, work related with the uh, Titan Grant project, but the uh, engineering is not allowed to be reimbursed for the Titan Grant, so we're paying on that. Of the remaining eighty-seven thousand dollars, that's being split over seventeen vendors. So we have um, a good handle on what we have right now and how stable. With the next check run that will be probably in a week's time. Part of paid off. New York State will be paid off by the end of August, which should lower our interest bill that we received afterwards. Last year, our interest bill was approximately $12,000. We are now three to four months sooner and paying that off. So I'm hoping that will bring our interest bill down to about eight or nine thousand dollars. So those are our accounts and uh, payable. Are there any questions on the budget to act in supporting? I've, I've left these reports now in Excel so we can get them or not. <laughs> And, and we did discuss with the finance committee meeting, possibly letting some of these payables go and just reserve our money. But I know from winter, we may have to go to some of these same people that we're paying off now and say it's going to take a little while to pay you. Well, I think the goodwill of keeping some of these people are getting the more current now will go a long way when. If we have to go back to the our justification for getting a lot of <laughs> And we're only two months into the fiscal year, so we are pretty much under budget in everything. If you look at the uh, budget to actual report, so at this point, we're doing really well. <laughs> Are there any questions that I can answer? I would add some just a couple of things that I found were interesting on the coming uh, on the balance sheet. I looked at the, the current asset cash reserves include Restricted accounts in the form of a million one hundred seventy thousand. And uh, I asked and was told that uh, those restricted accounts are largely the contents that I'm in with uh, companies that are providing large credit as well as the bond And uh, those are uh, parts of the <coughs> agreement. While they are uh, assets that the rigid board is going to be there, required to be checked out the boxes with those uh, institutions. So, uh, 
that comes out of it. So maybe 50-50, but we get a certain portion that we should be putting back into the facility that's a realization of, you know, out of the 100%, it is 50-50, but it's on, there's a portion of that that goes straight to us that we should be putting aside and we should be putting into that facility because they want to work in a facility that's upgraded. So, mm -hmm. So we've got to get out of the habit of taking that money and running it into the general fund. But that is part of the agreement, um, and it always has been yep. there. But there is a portion of there that um, and we're working on that. So what's, what's <clears throat> good about that whole issue and discussion we're having now is the fact that you brought it up and asked the question. Some of us have been here for a while understand that's how it works. Before I was chair, I was chair of the port committee, so I understood all that. That doesn't necessarily mean everyone else understands all those little things well, like right, that. This is, I'm still learning. Right. A couple of years down the road. So it was good that you asked for the detailed explanation so that now everybody else understands that's what happens. Thank you. Good. Thank you. You've done your job again, Mr. Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions on that? On the monthlies? 
Chris, do you have anything else? Nope, all wrapped. Thank you. <clears throat> Facilities Committee, Mr. King. Uh, yeah, so we Facilities Committee met on the 8th of July, and we had a very good initial meeting uh, with uh, the Steve and the Alders Associates which is uh, who we're going to be talking to to employ Tyson Yard, uh, working with them to work with the airport. Um, and we spent about an hour learning about what it was they do with their credentials, making sure that it's a good fit. And um, Penny, 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 so Penny and Spencer gave us a nice report about the airports they work with, the things they do. We had some Stephanie asked great questions, so we all actually uh, documented what, what it was they do and making sure their information to it was clear from some of the questions they had done some research already. So it uh, looks to be good. And uh, I know from that meeting, uh, Steve, you might know you might have meetings scheduled now because that was what we're, we're uh, tentatively we're shooting for July 27th. So it's a Tuesday. And then um, would you I, I don't want to put more on your schedule or anything, but toward the end of the day, um, would you like to meet with them? So We'll, we'll talk about we'll it. talk about that, yeah. sure. So uh, it would be probably good, but they it does appear they get, they've got some neat capability to help us. So, so with that, that would be meeting moving forward. Very positive. It was. <clears throat> Anything else to add? Dan, you were there too. Dan, you were there. Now you hit it all of us. I think a really great meeting. and. Um, yeah, we did spend a lot of time at the end talking about specifically their work with airports that are very similar to our demographics. That was. It sounds uh, I'm very change. excited having been part of what we did before for the airport. This is. And then there was a couple of things of just talking broadly, but there was a couple of things we didn't even know that they could help us with. Yes. That and we I, individually, I can talk to any of you of, of what that was, but um, I was quite surprised. I think there's at least two things anyway that um, we'll, if we can go through with it, I think will be a great help to us. Yeah, it'll be an on-site, in-person thing. They they really want that. They, we can give them the tour and kind of line everybody up for that. Looks like Dave said you 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 read what they do on their website. It was impressive. But we're a little unique in a lot of other authorities, airports, all of that. So asking them questions that are tailored just to our airport. The meeting was over, I felt much more comfortable with employing them to do what we're asking of them uh, than when we started. So uh, that was good. Um, she was uh, very knowledgeable, uh, answered questions straightforward. <clears throat> and uh, I thought that's a good report with Stephanie, who, who either she'll be working with or Spencer. And, um, you know, part of this is making things. Maybe they'll open our eyes to what we can do to save some money out to the airport and make things more efficient. I think working with Stephanie, I think that happened. So I was very pleased with the presentation. Anything to add, Stephanie? No, I, I never worked with them before, but uh, the two. Two items that Steve had mentioned, I was really surprised to hear and really pleased to hear, because that is where we do not have any real experience and we can use their expertise. And I'm anxious to see what what their thoughts are, especially after our uh, our tour and, and our initial meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any other questions of uh, Dave or Jen? Steve, regarding that? No? No, but can I interrupt just a second? Yes. Uh, we had a, a little IT work. Jennifer, do you hear us any better? 
Good. Can, can she say Can you say something? We're not, we're not hearing you, Jennifer. Okay, how about that? Okay, yeah, dramatically better. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Move on reports. Income expense report we've already had. Unless you have anything else to add, Patty? No. Chris? No. No? Okay. Bridge traffic report. Um, I believe that's in here. Yes. Mr. Warren? Um, kind of more of the same, actually, uh, with relation to all other crossings. Truck traffic um, is um, still holding fairly strong, even considering the bridge closure, because this is June was when we. Uh, we started the bridge closure the very first week of June, right? So we thought maybe there'd be some uh, hiccups there. Um, it it did, uh, you'll see it, uh, the change versus uh, 2019, it has kind of leveled off to where it's below that time frame. But um, without digging into what happened in 2019, um, I know for the couple months prior, we were beating that number, which was great to see. Um, Overall, though, you look at revenue, and uh, it's just that's just an enormous amount of money to be, uh, you know, not to be able to uh, take in. So um, uh, I don't know if everybody's probably a little tired of um, people aren't share quarterbacking what's happening with the border, but I did have a meeting with the bridge and tunnel, um, different people from the bridge and tunnel, and I they came up with a number of things of what they see happening. Um, I'm a little reluctant to do this on camera only because I don't want someone to take this as gospel, but I, I want to do a uh, kind of a notice that this is um, what we think, but it's not been backed up by anybody. But I think it would be helpful. It's helpful to me. Um, the first thing basically was um, a lot of them talked with CBSA, Transport Canada, and Public Health Agency in Canada. And those agencies all stress that they don't know what's going to happen. And there's no specifics that they're mentioning. So I wanted to use that disclaimer. But from what I got from everybody, the border will not reopen July 21st. Uh, the Canadian government on July 21st may announce another phase like they did here, and they to occur sometime in August. It's similar to what was done on June 21st when the government removed the quarantine requirements for fully vaccinated Canadians, and that was July 5th. The increases in the US and the Delta variant may influence the time, because you know, you're hearing more of that, that. So at best, the July 21st announcement will expand um, to allow those that enter Canada to include Americans and other nationalities with proof of full vaccination. Okay, that sounds good, but the same rules will apply to them as they do to a fully vaccinated Canadian, which means you must have a negative PCR COVID test taken within 72 hours of arriving at the border. So next day COVID tests, for example, in Buffalo are 160 bucks. To get results in one hour is 250 bucks. So the more rapid and cheaper antigen test tests will not be allowed um, for crossings. So when you, upon arrival, you've got to take a COVID test. So I'm, I'm just trying to break this down the way that it was broken down to me. I thought it was very good. Then you must register if you're going to Canada and you say you're a vaccinated American and you've done all that. You've got to do the CBSA Arrive Can app on a mobile device or online within 72 hours prior to arriving on the border. Vaccination proof and pre-arrival tests must be uploaded to the Arrive Canada app, and you must show the Arrive Canada receipt to a CBSA officer when you're at the primary inspection booth when entering Canada. Children under 18 not vaccinated traveling with vaccinated adults must quarantine for 14 days essentially eliminating any family trap, right? 
the result will be that the border, practically speaking, remains closed. Property owners and families and friends wishing to cross the border may periodically subject themselves to all these requirements. You know, that's because you've got something you got to do. So you'll go through the whole motions to check your camp or your cabin or your retirement or vacation spot. But if you're a discretionary traveler, it ain't going to happen. You're not coming over here to do all of that just to make that fish and chips. Um, exactly. Your vice, right, or Chinese food, right? Yeah. So there will be no, so there are no similar rules or restrictions when you enter the U.S. This means the impact on Canadians is greater than Americans. A Canadian will not make the same trip to the U.S. as they will have to schedule a COVID test, pay $250 for the PCR results to enable them to return to Canada. An American could plan for the same day visit to Canada, but getting a PCR test in a couple of days before a planned visit. In reality, however, given the inconvenience, cost, and requirements, discretionary travel will be non-existent. The requirement appears to be more set, suitable for air travel. So I don't know how that actually figures in because people who travel by air tend to stay longer. So you're not, you know, you don't bump in and out unless you're business, then you're essential travel, you get around that. So, so the upshot is um, what they feel, the impact on the border crossings, tourism industry, and the local binational economies will continue to be horrible, really. And the cross-border travel for 2021 for the summer, or the, you know, it's basically lost. It's the same as last year. So these things we were talked about, but they kind of put them into perspective that um, me as an American kind of, okay, I, I understand the situation um, kind of um, because their firsthand experience it over there. So I just kind of wanted to throw that all out there. It's not great news, but um, I I don't know. It, you never know, but that's our, their best uh, take on all of that. So, <coughs> any questions on any of that? Don, we'll move on to the uh, airport activity and occupancy reports. Well, we've been doing much better. Uh, in here in June, as SkyWest predicted, the numbers of passengers were up significantly, actually better than 2019. July's is looking even better as they also predicted. Uh, I've been giving you the screen passenger count just because the actual count from SkyWest is usually, usually comes to me after the board meeting. Uh, there is a difference and it is kind of, it is significant, but um, for June, the total in-plane passengers that are counted for our purposes, for the FAA purposes, was 999 versus 1,159 that were screened. And that, initially the um, TSA told me they were not counting the flight crew. They are counting the flight crew. So that is three a day, but also in plane passengers are paying passengers and not um, non-revenue passengers. For example, they had 23 non-revenue passengers in June that don't count toward that total. They of course were screened, but they did not count as the total. Uh, flight load for in plane passenger was 48.95% for June, which is pretty good, um, including the um, non-rev passengers, it was 50%. I am seeing in July, 55, 56% already, uh, average over the month. So I think it's getting better. It is getting better. Uh, a lot of phone calls, people wanting to fly and, and asking the questions again. And that's great. Um, the occupancy is different than the one that you folks received. Um, 
because we do have uh, additional that are on this board um, resolutions that are on today's meeting. Right now, our tea hangers are full, and we are going. You are going to vote today on uh, a lease for a tie-down space because you cannot get a hanger. It's a good problem to have. Uh, we do have a few folks who are planning on leaving. Uh, one in particular is going to leave the end of uh, September. He's a summer person. He's taking his, you know, have his plane back uh, in the D.C. area for the winter. And the tea hanger, or I'm sorry, the tie down space gentleman has already requested that he move into the hangar as soon as possible. We are seeing an uptick um, in the GA flights. Uh, I just finished the calculations right before I came here. We uh, sold over 3,000 gallons of fuel the first 15 days of the month. Um, and that's been, I think we've only had one, one month since I have been here that we've sold more and it was in 2019, can't remember which month, we sold 5,000 gallons in a month. So it's looking better that way. The larger aircraft are coming in, um, taking more fuel. So it, in that respect, it's, it's improving greatly. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions of Stephanie? Matt, we'll move on to the port activity report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, basically, uh, Main activity has been moving road salt. Um, it comes in and then uh, we move it. You see a massive stockpile over there. The uh, the pile on the on the end of the port has been covered, and that's been kind of put to bed till winter time. And then we are working on. Uh, I believe what you're looking at is probably four vessels of uh, salt in that large pile. That'll be covered partially covered probably by the uh, middle or end of next week. Um, and then we're still loading that as we go toward the uh, um, as we go toward the uh, city dock there. So we should have that all kind of shaped up. Um, we need to keep clearing that away. I mean, if this was uh, late October, November, um, we would um, probably in our area there we just leave it, and add to that pile, and shape it and cover it. But um, with conversations with Adam and OMLC. Um, that would probably be irresponsible in that if something came along, then it would be on our dime to move all of that in a hurry just to make sure that a project happens. So we're just staying on top of it rather than um, with the expectation that we could see something later in the year. Um, no guarantees, but as we get to later in the year, we're able to give up that space because we know it won't be used. But um, when if you were to look down there, you'd see um, exactly what um, the port expansion project will do for us. Um, right now, ships can only come so far, and we've had front loading, bow unloading ships and ships that offload from their, the end, and uh, they can only come up so far. So they filled the area that they can fill, and there's, we can't add anything more to it. So now we offload uh, at a uh, lower or up toward our other buildings is kind of our, our offloading area because the port that the, the pier is all full so we can't use that so we have an area so we're constantly you know it takes about two weeks to move uh, 20 25,000 tons onto the large stockpile well um, we're going to get so that we're going to have to start another stockpile probably in the rail area there and uh, Patty has told me that I can't refuse any salt ship, so we're gonna we're gonna take uh, um, what we can. Um, and if I, you probably don't remember, but when we did the compass um, contract, um, we went back and forth with them, and we gave them a bit of a percentage break on storage and uh, offloading um, for anything over 100,000 tons, and we feel um, that was. Um, that was an incentive for them and it seems to have taken off. So um, that's good for us for offloading and also for storage. 
um, a lot of that's all that's just going to be uh, a money generating revenue um, right up through until it starts to move so i'm pleased with that and then uh, you see on grain um, that's been very good too with our canola meal um, rail slowed down in the last couple of weeks but we still have taken in a lot of uh, canola meal and it's still there really there it, it doesn't move it's not moving really fast but we've uh, filled up we have hardly anywhere we can go with that um, product um, so as far as grain and salt go is what we do it's been very good any questions no. <clears throat> The uh, building occupancy and industrial commercial prospect report. I know, Patty, you and nothing that? has changed from the last uh, fiscal report that you have. We have three or four leases to be approved resolutions this evening. We are basically full in the industrial park, and we are full in this building, except for the economic development office, which we're hesitating renting depending on how we fill the position so we're, we're sort of holding on that right now uh, we could actually use two more buildings and we could probably fill them based on people we've, we've had it. requests to we'd like 15,000 more square feet we'd like 10,000 more square feet uh, office space office space are these existing people some are just existing. looking to expand or are they new some are existing some are new canadian or american canadian yeah. looking to get their, their people on the u.s side we could use a forty thousand square foot office warehousing building split in two and then we could use a small office building with nothing but offices what's happened over the years is some of the warehouse buildings have been cut up and we now have little offices in them they're not necessarily truly appropriate for how the building was originally designed so if we could maximize office space in office setting then that would leave us to to readjust some of the warehousing space that has been popped up if you will isn't it also advantageous in the thought of any new building ceilings are higher than what we have now? Yes. Some yes, some no. Some do not need the height in the in the warehousing. Yeah, in the early 2000s, uh, high pile high pile storage was a big thing, like the Lowe's, all of the places you go in. But I think there's a meeting. I think most of our warehouse is somewhere between 13 and 16 feet the older stuff mm -hmm. and that's not high enough but when you go to 30 or 40 what what happens is um i think they found that um, you're, you're heating a lot of unused space um, especially your warehouse if you're a retail thing that's one thing that's your warehouse and, and all of that but i think there's a, a kind of a need for something probably 18 to 25 and we did do a survey and that's why two of those buildings were built that was in the 2000s everybody said they wanted high pile storage with uh, storage racks and, right. and all of that and um in our case it was one of them was used quite a bit and then when they moved out of there there really hasn't been a need for that height yet heard a lot of really good problems to have so far <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, anything else? Any other questions? <clears throat> Any unfinished business, Mr. Lawrence? Uh, none, Mr. Chairman. Okay, let's move on to business items. A1, approval director of economic development job description. Whoever would like to tackle that. Do you want to talk to Jen or Patty? You, you both kind of want to talk yeah. about it. Because I know, Patty, you put together the final, the, the finished product. Uh, what we did is we took the previous uh, industrial development 
job description. We then went out and looked at other economic development type job descriptions to come together with a sort of a, a compilation. We brought it to the personnel committee meeting and we decided what things we felt were the most important to put out there and the qualifications that we were requesting of the applicants. And as Jennifer said earlier, we are now to the point that if this is approved, that we will start considering how to advertise it, where are the best places to uh, do the strategic, very specific advertising so that it's not just broad-based, it's, it's quite uh, focused. Okay. Can you do, describe it pretty much in, the, <clears throat> in your report? Uh, anyone have any questions of Patty or Jen? Brett, the description is in front of you. I'm, I'm looking at the essential functions. And the second from the last says provide general marketing for all authority entities. What's the definition of general marketing? Well, we had we got into quite a discussion about that. Um, you know, we really wanted the description, this job description to be comprehensive. So we we decided that marketing is going to be a part of this position, but in a very general sense. You know, we've got now uh, um, Stephen Baldwin associates are that are going to be really targeting the airport. So we just felt that the person in this capacity may be asked to do some marketing. Um, I mean, I don't know, perhaps at the port. I'm not really, I'm not really sure in what capacity. Assisting but. with research, um, insight, Right, that's what we're saying. So to have a little, to have some hand in marketing. Well, we have OMLC that does support. Okay. That's their job. Okay. Um, I think we will find as we go through uh, with the uh, consultants at the airport, what they recommend. But I don't know. You know it, they may not. This position may not be able to do as much out there as they recommend. I don't know. You know what I mean? We used to have an individual who did that in addition to other things. Maybe more needs to be done. Maybe their recommendation, you would have uh, more uh, general aviation or more flights if you did more marketing for the air. In that case, you know, I don't know if this individual could spend that much time in it in light of if things really start picking up as far as uh, firms looking to come here, how much time they would have. So I don't know, other than the term, you know, leaving it general, that may, might have to be modified down the road. Can I? Just kind of how I view that. I'll, I'll give an example. Like uh, we have uh, programs and flyers and brochures that we advertise in. Um, you know, I can take the time and you can take stuff, but I'm thinking in a general way if Stephanie needed something um, that that this person would have that oh no problem I'll take care. Of it. I know you, you know it's more of the general being a generalist and being able to. Um, send out um, what she has or, or something kind of almost a clearinghouse for our stuff that um, isn't as detailed as what Sam's talking about. It's more um, um, maybe um, a request on our signage on our, our things that at least have a hand in general things here that you bring your talent to not not to be the uh, originator of it, but to to work hand in hand with um, something that I need, Patty needs or Stephanie needs or the airport or the port needs that um, kind of 
along the word of advertising or marketing or something like that. I don't know if maybe I'm looking at that wrong, but it's kind of more or less somebody that can make it happen and get it taken care of uh, at the end end part of that. That's kind of how I looked at it. But it, it, is that kind of out of what you guys had yeah. in mind? I, right, and I think that like according to my notes, we had we had kind of tagged onto the previous bullet when mm -hmm. we were talking about civic groups. So we just want mm -hmm. the the candidate to understand that they may be called on to do some general marketing types of tasks. When like I read season. that, oh, sorry. Yeah. When I read that, I was thinking about when John and John used to go to like conventions or stuff across the border where you are kind of representing us and you might have brochures or whatever. To me, that fits under kind of general marketing. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I don't think, I didn't take that to mean that would be like anywhere close to the bulk of what that job is about. <laughs> right. It's just all hands on deck around here. You guys know. Right. Well, I, I would be pleased if someone probably to, it would make sense to me to have the economic development person do this who are responsible for overseeing, if not deciding, paid advertising, printed ad publications, and things like that, press releases. And I think that all those things need, need to go through the proper vet, you know, before they're released. But if this is dispersed, in a lot of ways, it doesn't end up being coordinated, sometimes it doesn't get done. And it is one of those things that, with a busy staff, must slip through the cracks once in a while. But it's very going to for this position, I'd like to ask him to do it. Dave? I just think that marketing is part of economic development. Yeah. All together, stall that should be expected. If you want more specific matters, I'm fine with that. I just think that it's kind of, it's just what they you know, I, I think doing all that. Somebody probably should at some point. Somebody should be in charge of the market direction. Maybe it is. No, I don't think it should be. Yeah. I don't think it should be. Yeah. Wow. I mean, right? It should be somebody looking at so. Right. David, I, I think that we under, we understand what we need. Yeah. I mean, we don't need to write more. As long as we understand, then it gets implemented. So when the interview is held with whoever, uh, the committee will need to understand uh, your concerns and Drew's comments and Megan's regarding what we're hoping that individual can do for us when they're here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Good. Flushed out in the interview. Good. Anything else? Okay. Okay. Motion's been made. Seconded. Been seconded. Any further discussion? Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Move on to agenda item B1, ratification of lease agreement with the city of Augensburg regarding the beach. Mr. Lawrence, I thought we already did this. Uh, well, we didn't have everything in there. Um, we, there was still some unknowns. We put a kind of caveat on insurance and okay. everything, and the city sent back and we signed, uh, uh, and we're working off of that lease. Um, there, but we just wanted to kind of wrap everything up so that um, we formalized that agreement. So that's under the B for the resolved part? Yes. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Resolution before you, is there a motion? Motion's been made. Second? I'll second. I'll second it. Any discussion? Um, do you know what the status is? 
I don't. I know there was some talk of uh, we haven't seen the safety plan yet, and I believe that had to be approved by the Department of Health, I think. So we haven't seen that yet. And uh, um, I haven't seen anything more other than there's a lifeguard chair down there. And uh, but I haven't seen the ropes out there or anything like right. that. But I haven't uh, I haven't been updated in I think since we saw Steve Jelly was here really when when we uh, took care of the lease. Then. There's no one down there swimming, correct? Correct. When I'm here. Okay. Uh, motion been made and seconded again. Any further discussion? Not Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Okay. Item uh, agenda item B2. Approval of the supplemental lease agreement number 18 with Daniel Dodge, CSW Carter. To ours? Well, I'll let Patty handle that. She's been handling the leases oh, lately. Okay. Um, Daniel Dodge is uh, his lease was up on the 30th of June. Uh, we want to get this all caught up with him. He would like to continue for another two year period. And as it is COVID, we have put sort of a moratorium on raising the, the rates until the next lease for everyone. Uh, he is paying 1354 per square foot. 191.82 per month, which includes utilities. Good. Motions before you. Okay. Sorry, the resolution is before you. Awesome. Motions been made. Seconded. Any further discussion? Not Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Agenda item. C, Commerce Park Campus. Approval of supplemental lease agreement number two for the River Vista Holdings. Ready? Also known as Connexus, for some of you who may have heard of it by name. There you go. Um, they have uh, requested a one year addition to their uh, renewal. This is their second supplement for 20,000 square feet in building 11 at their current rate of $7,235.14 per month. Plus they pay the prorated share of the utilities in building 11. Okay, motions before you. Resolution. I'll move it. <laughs> also move the resolution. <laughs> it's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? I'll, Emory, call the roll, please. <laughs> Must be in a hurry. I don't know. Yes. 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 Next, agenda item C in Commerce Park again. Approval of supplemental lease agreement number one with Nova Networks. Nova would like to renew their lease for a two year period. We have a, a 187 square foot office in building one. Two year period from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2023, at the current rate of $120 per month, including utilities. Good. Resolution is before you. Is there a motion? Mr. King? I'll second. Second it. Any further discussion? Don Amory, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Then to item D, Augsburg International Airport. Approval of lease agreement with Glass Box Research Company. Stephanie, you doing that one? Yes, sir. Uh, this is the uh, lease that I previously talked about. Uh, this uh, company, uh, Mr. Mark Mueller, requests a tea hanger, but uh, we are full. So at this point, he would like to have a tie down space at the airport, uh, $65 per month. 
uh, for a year or until tea hanger space becomes available. And at that point, he would transition into a tea hanger lease. Okay. I see not what's written here. Yeah. I have a tea hanger lease approval. Me. Mr. Cruz went up. Like this one? Yeah. yeah. Tie down space. Piece of paper with glass box recently. Yeah. That's the right one. We're good. Okay. Resolution speaks to the uh, tie down space at the rate of 65 per month, the period July 15th through June 30th, 2022, or until a T hanger space becomes available. And it was nice to see a tie down. Also. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Mm -hmm. Resolution for you. Is there a motion? Probably. Motion's been made. Oh, okay. Seconded. No further discussion. Anne Marie, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Agenda item D2 approval of a tea hanger, please. Right? Yes, sir. This is a renewal for um, Mr. Proven. He has been a long time tenant and uh, and a tenant in good standing. Requests an additional year's lease. Okay. Resolutions removed. Second. 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 Any discussion? Madam Amory, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Agenda item E, approval of base bid award, front end loader to Tracy Road. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to have to pull this uh, resolution due to the fact that I got notification from the Federal Railroad Administration that um, we asked for a waiver for the Buy American clause. Um, we only had one bidder. Um, they didn't meet the Buy American Clause. Um, we had a no bid from another uh, vendor who could do an American, but it wouldn't meet our specs. It wasn't a large enough loader. So um, we had 18 vendors that took documents and only one submitted, which was Tracy Road Equipment. I, we thought the process for a waiver would be, uh, you know, something maybe in the uh, category of a month month or so, well, it's going to be six months to a year to go. So we will probably advertise this again. Unfortunately, um, this was kind of, this loader would have met the spec and it would have worked in very well, but um, uh, the grant requirements are by American and we have to honor that. So right. um, I really want to, I, and you'll see on there, I did put that it, um, it would be contingent on being awarded but we got the notification, so there's no point in, in, in uh, approving this. Only we already know the answer to that. So we will put it out for bid and hopefully uh, we find a vendor or somebody that can meet that specification um, with a Buy American requirement. Um, I want to make sure. Um, Jennifer, um, do we table or? Yes, I would table yeah, it. Table it, and then just let it die on the table. Basically, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Motion to table. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'll send you. Motion to made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. It's table. All right. I believe we have a agenda item F1. That's correct. Approval of repair of building six HVAC rooftop unit. Mr. Lawrence? Um, we have a rooftop unit located at Commerce Park building six and the, all of that building is operated or uh, occupied by Strader Ferris. Um, 
the AC has not been working. The heating unit has been, but uh, uh, we asked Train to look at that to get it repaired. And uh, what they found, there was a faulty compressor and contactor. And uh, when they tested it, um, they, they couldn't get anything to uh, work properly. So I asked for price for repair and one for replacement. And um, I will tell you right outright, if we had the money, I would be definitely going for a replacement. Um, I did discover that they did replace a fan motor, which was quite costly a year ago. So just so you'll know, I said, what are the three things you'd have to worry about? One of them was the fan motor, the uh, compressor, and then the other is the heat exchanger. So. The way I look at it is two out of the three of them are relatively new. Um, but if the heat exchanger goes, that could all go out the window. But um, I haven't replaced the HVAC unit around here in seven years. And previous times, we used to do two to three a year. And it's catching up with us. And um, I know you, you know, basically, uh, this is what we have to do right now. But it's not what I want to do in the future. So I just want to make you aware of kind of the situations we're up against um, financially um, as far as when maintenance gets overlooked. And this is a direct result of um, not paying attention to roofs and all of those kind of things. They're going to, there's going to be more of those, I assume, in the next couple of years. And you're just going to say, you know, it, it shouldn't happen, but it, it, it will be happening. And it's all, it's a direct result of neglect and putting off, um, for, you know, you're not doing preventive maintenance. You're chasing it all the time and it's not the best way to spend your money. But we're in no situation right now to be able to turn that around. I'm, I've always been aware of it, but we just haven't had the money to do that. So I guess I'm trying to dampen any criticism here. Um, if it was me, I, you know, I wouldn't spend the 5,500, but um, we need that and we need to go forward with that. Um, I'm just saying it's not the best use of money. Steve, I might be remembering this wrong or just thinking about something else, but I thought we had a maintenance contract. We do. Um, oh, no, only at the border station. Oh. Uh, they honor, they honor gotcha. prices. They honor their, they, they give us New York State pricing when they do um, things in the park. They're kind of our go-to people. We do a lot of work on our own. But generally, train doesn't do what they did. You don't, other than a 16-year-old HVAC failing completely, which you were here, remember that whole deal. Mm -hmm. But there's another one. Um, there are two units up there that are probably going to cost fifty to 60000 that should have been replaced two years ago. And so, you know, we'll get bit again probably if we don't plan properly. But, um, but to answer your question, um, Train's been very good up there, keeping that stuff going a lot, um, and they they've done really well with that. But we didn't get a maintenance program for the rest of the uh, organization. Well, this is a judgment call. I appreciate Steve's recommendation. Well, we did speak to Train. Yeah, I did. and um, this isn't something that's only going to be a one-year. Oh, yeah, they did say, you know, all things, you should get two or three years without things. They said the heat exchanger looks fine, but, you know, you can't guarantee all of that. There could be a burn through in the, uh, when it's used a lot in the wintertime or something like that. But generally speaking, um, it, it'll last a, a while anyway. This is on building six? Yes. How many people are employed in there now? Yeah. Street Affairs. Yeah. Street Affairs has a 20, 25. Minimum. Yeah. And, truck and they drivers. haven't had air conditioning for how long? Well, it's just, they've got air conditioning. You know, we have other units there, but there's a section of the building that this wasn't working in. I think it was in the uh, back warehouse. At the end of it. They're actually looking to expand. Hmm. Chris, I understand, you know, I understand financial, but 
because in the past we didn't have the, the money to do rehab like we should have on these buildings. I would rather, if at all possible, we can talk about it, bite the bullet and uh, and get the new one. <laughs> What is the eighteen? Eight, 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 so, How many years would we get out of that? Uh, anywhere from twelve to fifteen. Consider. Long long yeah. I get your bleep, your bleep is telling, but no, I, I appreciate that attitude. I mean, <laughs> I, it's it's just a matter <laughs> of I, you're trying to balance everything, and you know, the I, difference I know, of, but we're looking at the company who. Is interested in staying and expanding, and I think if at all possible, we should show. Well, it hurts. We certainly appreciate the fact that they're here and they're operating and are willing to expand. So, again, just my opinion, I would rather do the replacement cost at eighteen five. Is there a financing option? Oh no! Well, they're building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they don't know it yet. <laughs> Unofficially, they're you'll get it when I got it. How many other units are in the building? Um, How many? Up something in? like that. When I there's either usually they go three, six. I, there might be nine on there that are in different sections. And you know the way. Well, Social Security used to be up front, so there was a number there that. And Social Security had a one-year condition just for their computer. That type okay. of thing. So, so this is one unit, just one unit of nine right in the there, building. Yeah, generally speaking, right now, the majority of the building has air conditioning. What kind of shape are all the other units in? Oh, uh, they're old. They're, <laughs> they're <laughs> old. Do we, can we get like a quantity discount? Uh, should we just say this <laughs> yep, yep. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 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 Yes, we would have to uh, amend amend the resolution. I have a quote on there. Yeah. So we have a quote for the replacement the compressor. We don't have a quote. For the I have a I do have a quote for the the, the whole unit sixteen five, and then you you've got. There's an end. the reason I said 18.5 is you've got you'll have to fit that unit on your um, oh it's a, a platform that it sits on so usually that's 1500 and then there's some labor involved in that but all in if you're all set up uh, it's only about what you'd be paying train is roughly 16.5 I believe it would be it was, uh, an amendment that um, Authority purchase a replacement uh, HVAC rooftop unit not to exceed eighteen five. You move that amendment. Okay, is that seconded? I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded to amend. Um, Marie, call the roll to amend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is not a vote on the amendment. That's right. No, it is on the amendment. Just the amendment. Just, just make the amendment and then we'll vote on it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the resolution, no, the amendment was passed. The resolution will now state that the executive director is authorized and directed to execute a contract with train. A replacement cost of a new HVAC rooftop unit not to exceed 18,500. That is the new motion. I'm sorry, new resolution. <laughs> I will so move that. Okay, that resolution has been moved. And seconded. Any further discussion? On the amended resolution. No? Hey Marie, call the roll, please. This is to buy the uh, the new 
HVAC rooftop units, not to exceed 18,500 rooms. Yes. Can you say what? Yes. 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 No. Yes. We never heard that word out here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Every now and then. She's I'm learning, I'm learning amendment and table today. <laughs> All these Robert Schools thing, right? Okay, agenda item know. F2. Approval of update the lease agreement with Med Eng LLC. Med Eng just uh, leases up uh, September 30th this year but their lease requests that they start the process 90 days prior and we have been going back and forth they had been offered uh, i believe it was a verbal only they were offered a reduction because they have the entire building now uh, so we had a discussion of if we had reduced the rate for them they would then incur the CPI, the annual CPI, or they could pay the current rate in the next five years, and they save over five years, I believe it's about $17,000. They felt that that was close to what the original verbal agreement of reducing the cost would have been so we finally got it straightened out that they will rent the 23,220 square feet of office and warehouse space in building 14, which is the entire building, for a five-year period from October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2026, at a rate of 977 per square foot, equaling $18,904.95 monthly or $226,859.40 annually. MedEdge will be responsible for all of the electrical and natural gas in the building as they run the entire Good. Heavy, what's CPI? What's CPI? Consumer price? Price, 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 price index. Okay. And that comes out monthly, actually, and we do an average for the year. This year it turned out to be 2.6 for the year. So we reduced it and then started adding those. They actually got better reduction, okay. quote unquote, if they remained at the current price with no CPI. Right, but we get a five year contract. Right? Yes. For an That's entire great. building. Yes. All right, for the entire building. Resolution is before you. Is there a motion? I'll move, move it. The resolution. I'll second it. Move, second it. Any discussion? If not, Amory, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Lawrence, is there anything else? Mr. Chairman, there's a need to go into executive session for matters relating to Section 10 or 105.1H of the Open Meetings Law. It's the proposed uh, uh, lease um, of real property. Do you anticipate any um, action after executive session? Uh, we anticipate no action or by formal vote will be taken. Is there a motion to go to executive session? I'll second. So made. Second. Seconded. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? We are in executive session at 532. Okay, we're out of executive session. Mr. Lawrence, any business to be conducted? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Okay, in light of that, we have uh, uh, proposed meeting date of August 5th, Thursday at 4 p.m. It's the board's pleasure. Is that a good date or not? Doesn't work for you. Mr. King, does it work for you? What works? Wednesday the 11th is fine for me. Mr. King? 
Mr. Coffin? Yeah. Oh, you're on vacation? We never know what's on the agenda. At 6.30. Him Ream will be here. Um, or two or Tuesday the tenth. She's still right here. You're here on the tenth. Tuesday the tenth. Yeah. No. Yes, for me. Chris. We can do that. We have Tony and Nicole. I hopefully can make it. We don't know yet. So we want to look at Tuesday the 10th at 330. Or is that too too early? Three thirty? Chris? That yeah, help? That sounds good. Dave? Jen? All right, let's do that. Tuesday, the 10th of August at uh, 3.30 p.m. Okay, any other business to be conducted? Now, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll send that. Motion's been made? Second. Seconded, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, we stand adjourned. Thanks everybody.